The Air Jordan 12 Black Wolf Gray. There's a lot of different parts of this shoe that I love, but also parts that I'm kind of salty or hating on. Let's go ahead and dissect this sneaker and get through all the different details so you guys can see how you feel about it as well. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. Hey! So first things first, let's go ahead and cover the box and talk about all the differences between the OG style and the new style for current time. So back in the day on the Air Jordan 12 box, we used to see the Nike on the top with the swoosh. Now you have the Jordan brand branding here with the Jumpman in black. And then on the side of the lid, it says Jordan right here in black text. And then the bottom half of the box is gonna be all black. Now on this side of the box right here, it says quality inspired by the greatest player ever. Now looking at the size tag, it reads Air Jordan 12 retro, black, wolf, gray, and white. Size 13, just for me. And retail on these is said to be $200. Now I got lucky and found a pair at SneakerCon Dallas. Shout out to the homies Twin Souls for working a trade for me because I wanted to give you guys an early look and I was very interested in this shoe as well. So lift and open the lid right here. You got your all over brown paper and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. So when it comes to first impressions of this sneaker when I held them in hand originally, Honestly, I feel like they're pretty solid. You can't go wrong with the color blocking. I'm very interested with this black tab instead of the gray, which we'll talk about in a little bit because I got my Flint gray 12s as well. Now, before we get into all the details of this shoe, you know we gotta go over the history first. We originally saw the Air Jordan 12 release in five different colorways back in 1996. You had the white and black colorway known as the Taxis, the black and white colorway known as the Playoffs, the white and red colorway known as the Cherries, the navy blue and white colorway known as the Obsidians, and I'm sure everybody knows about his famous flu game, black and red colorway. After seeing those five releases dropping almost 30 years ago for a retail price of 135 bucks, we have now seen a ton of different colorways when it comes to Air Jordan 12s in particular, and especially different colorways when it comes to the Wolf Gray. One fan favorite that a lot of people wanna see retro right now is the Wolf Gray Air Jordan 5s. Those came out about 10, 15 years ago, and a ton of people are anxiously waiting for a retro, especially with that clear outsole and the yellowing over time. I think it's past due. And for other notable Wolf Gray Air Jordan models, we have the Futures, the 12 Lows, the 13s, the 14s, and the threes. We can't forget the threes. But another one that's pretty funny that a lot of people don't really realize is in that same category, the Dior Highs and the Dior Lows. So this is very interesting because the coloring says that on the box and people are going by that when it comes to the name of the shoe, but also we're hearing a lot of people call these the Baron 12s. I completely understand, but at the same time, there's nothing on this shoe that says Baron's Air Jordan 12. So let's go ahead and start breaking down the shoe so you guys can see all the other elements as well. So looking at the outsole, we have your classic Air Jordan 12 bottom. You got your herringbone tracks and you got your black jump man with the white 23 right here on the front and around the toe. And then you have your black and gray carbon fiber plate right here in the center of the foot and more herringbone traction in the back with the wolf gray rubber all around the border of the shoe. Now wrapping up to the side of the shoe right here, you're gonna have your mud guard and that's gonna be covered in a textured gray leather as well. And then on the back half around the heel, you're actually gonna have a all black pod compared to the same gray like you see on the mud guard and on the bottom of the shoe. Now this is something that's gonna be similar to the Flint gray Air Jordan 12s as well. As you can see, it has the white right here matching with the upper on the material, but a big switch up compared to these, you actually have a gray tab right here with the Jumpman branding, instead of these ones actually have a black tab with the Jumpman branding. I personally like that more unison in sync look with the, you know, just two tone, cherry 12s, flu game, something like that. I think this particular color blocking, you can literally never go wrong. And again, this is just a slight tweak, but it kind of throws it off just a little bit in the middle for me. I'm not mad at it, but that's just kind of how I feel. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below. Now, when it comes to the leather in the upper on the material right here, you're gonna have an all black leather slightly tumbled on this area. And as I feel it, it has kind of a soft feel. It's gonna be a little bit stiffer around the back end, around the collar. And that comes to another comparison here. The leather on these shoes back in the day. The comfort on these shoes back in the day. This isn't even a original colorway from an OG release. This is like, you know, first time retro new colorway vibe, but I'm just giving you guys an example of these styles. The materials in this time, it's just so hard to match. And I think this is something that a lot of sneakerheads have the conversation about time after time after time after time again. We do have to understand, we wanted the original leathers and all the different things, but we have to have sustainable companies that are no longer using those things. So we see synthetic leathers and other alternatives when it comes to creating these models. And I understand that aspect as well when it comes to the business side and those different elements. So it's hard to repeat the same thing and give you the same exact vibe. But I feel like honestly, when it comes to the recent Jordan 12s, especially the Cherry 12s, they've been doing a really good job. So 
overall, I'm not mad at this shoe. Now, continuing on the details of the tongue right here, you're gonna have your all black rope laces, you're gonna have your 2 3 in the wolf gray text, and then your wolf gray Jumpman logo here at the top of the tongue. Now, when it comes to the insoles right here, you can see you have a dream cell material. So, you typically see like the blue ones with the lines on them. That's like the cheapest, lowest quality ones. We don't want those at all. The dream cell. It's an upgrade, it works, it gets the job done for the most part, but a lot of people always want polyurethane. Now, a lot of people have the other argument. They prefer polyurethane only be on the original colorways, and I could see that too, but personally as a consumer, I'm like, hey, if you get a pair and it comes with a different pair of retros, just switch the insoles and throw them in there if you really need to, if that's the issue. But it would be nice to have PU in all of them, <laughs> But you know, we can't get it all the time. Now before we take it to the back end of the shoe, we gotta mention right here our plastic silver tips right here with the Jumpman branding at the top of the lace holes. And then on the back end around the heel, you got your classic iconic Air Jordan 12 branding. The 23 with the black text. And then you have your Jordan right here in gray. And then it says quality inspired by the greatest player ever. Similar to the box like we saw earlier. And at the top of the pull tab right here, you're gonna have an all wolf gray square and then a black Jumpman in the center of that. Now when I posted a poll on Instagram asking the people if this shoe was fire or trash 65% of the people said fire and 35% of the people said trash let me know what you guys think down below after seeing more detailed shots and on foot looks at this sneaker but I'm also interested what do people think about these compared to the Flint gray 12 so first things first you can't beat the face box that's just undefeated and these came with a retro card. I mean, again, another iconic staple. This was a very great retro card, and you guys all remember the good times of scratching off the different shoes and trying to collect the whole set and get every number and see what was coming next. This is just so nostalgic, so iconic. Like we talked about earlier with the tab on the back end, if you look on the inside of the tab here, it's actually all gray on the back side, and then it's white all throughout. So this, you would assume, would be all gray on the inside right here but it's actually just all black on the inside. And then you have your red hits right here on the heel tab, as you can see, all red around the border with the red 23. Gives it a nice little pop in addition to the shoe. And then it's gonna be that same thing on the bottom of the shoe as well. So yes, they are similar, but they're definitely not the same even when it comes to the color blocking, you can tell the patterns. You see it's all one unique, same color, all gray with the red hits and the white jump man. And then on here, you're gonna have couple different colors as well but the color patterning is a lot different as well so I can understand why they didn't go with this verbiage and they switched it up and went to this and not that many people even have this shoe or know about this shoe so that's why I wanted to show you guys so you can see some of the little differences and details between the two shoes as well now like I said earlier in the video speaking on comfort and quality of the shoe this is gonna check those boxes but at the same time this is a 20 year old shoe this shoe's been out for a long time and you could potentially have cracking on here and and I have kept mine in really good condition. I had a couple pairs of these, so that was why luckily I was able to have a nice pair still in my collection to this day. But trust me when I tell you, <laughs> the soles could fall off, the plastic tabs could break. There's a lot of different things that could happen to this shoe with this type of age. And I could see this same thing happening to these in the future. I don't know, they say they make the shoes different now, but again, 20 years from now, <laughs> we'll find out. So yes, I'm gonna have my bias when it comes to this sneaker, and I have so many memories, and I might be willing to make some memories in these as well, but I'm interested to see what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comment section, which shoe do you guys like more? I asked the people on Instagram, and this is what they said. 58% of the people chose the Flint Grays, and 42% of the people chose the Wolf Grays. Let me know down below. I hear a lot of people say they prefer dark shoes, so in this scenario, it's kind of interesting as well, because me personally, I do prefer dark shoes as well, but these things just go hard. And maybe it's that little touch of red on the shoe that adds another element, but either way, I like both shoes at the end of the day. So that's gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We got a ton more reviews and tutorials coming soon. I have fully curated playlists with a bunch of reviews from the past as well. So make sure you guys go check that out after this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right, you guys, I'm out. I would never let you down, it's in my DNA. Hey, the hey, only choice I like to make what I'm aware it's today. One of those. I would never let you down, it's in my DNA. The only choice I like to make what I'm I'm aware today. I was made for it. It's in the DNA.